Hey guys, Tori Drake, Denver Realtor. Welcome to 10 things I learned moving from California to Denver, Colorado. I know a lot of people are moving here thinking about making that move, so I wanted to give you some things that I learned here to help you make that decision if you want to be here or not. Speaking of which, this is part four of a four-part series called So You're Thinking of Moving to Denver, where I basically tell you and answer all the questions. Basically, I just tell you everything I think you should know before you move here and things that I wish I knew before I moved to Denver, Colorado. So you can check that out in my playlist the series. Okay, so number one is that that I learned, this is basically all lessons I learned the hard way, by the way, is that if it, if you are being invited on a hike, you have to ask questions. Do not just say yes blindly. That sounds like I'm making a joke, which I somewhat am, but it's also definitely true, is that once again, I'm from California, Los Angeles specifically. I reference all, in my videos, I reference that a lot. Um, and you could basically be invited on any hike and say yes and be completely be fine. You'll ba it'll basically be a walk for the most part, once again, if you're in LA. With Colorado, you could be being invited on a hike that's actually like a, thir a 13er or a 14er or something absurdly very challenging. Uh, for example, the first hike I went on was, uh, s someone said it was a six mile hike. I was like, cool, six miles, not that bad. Well, it turns out it was six miles one way. Uh, so it was 12 miles total. I did not bring snacks. I did not bring enough water. I was not prepared. Uh, so to be invited on a hike, it's not like you have to sit down and interrogate them and be like, oh, how long of a hike is it total? What's the starting elevation? Are you bringing food? Are you bringing water? Um, basically just ask some questions to gauge how intense this hike is going to be because some of the hikes here are super chill and easy and a lot of them are not. Number two, if you're going on a hike during summer or actually basically any time of year, check the weather and still maybe pack some rain gear, even if it doesn't say rain. Even if it's summertime, the very first hike I went on, that was a 12 mile hike actually. And on the way back, my girlfriend at the time and I complete, it was like July or something, 89 degrees when we started, middle of the day, we just went wearing uh, shorts and whatnot. And we saw other people with umbrellas and we were like, why are they, why are they bringing umbrellas? That's weird. Um, and we got hit with a crazy rainstorm, thunder, lightning, hail, crazy wind and rain. And we basically got obliterated on that hike and we, we had nothing. Uh, so check the weather report, but even then I'd keep an umbrella in your car or you know a lightweight umbrella in your hiking pack. Number three, speaking of which, even if you're not hiking in the mountains, keep an umbrella or rain gear in your car and just overall be prepared mentally and literally ready uh, for weather to shift, even during summer. Uh, you'll get a rain, it'll be 80 degrees in July, and you'll get a random 30, 45 minutes downpour of rain. Uh, that same summer, no. Was it at the sum? Some past summer, I was at uh, Elitch Garden, which is an outdoor theme park here, and it had to get shut down once again, middle of the summer, hot day, and thunder and ratings, lightning storm rolled in and the whole park got shut down. So just be prepared, literally, and just knowing that those weather shifts happen, especially in summer. Number four, I'm sure you've heard before, but it has to be said is the elevation here will mess you up if you are not prepared for it. Uh, the easiest way to prepare for it is just to make sure to drink lots of water because you're gonna get dehydrated quicker. Uh, if you're visiting and going out for drinks, drink less because the, uh, the low oxygen does something to your blood that makes your tolerance go down a lot. So you're gonna get drunk a lot quicker. So don't don't drink as much as you normally do. Uh, your hangovers are gonna be worse here if you if you do drink more because you're more less dehydrated, more dehydrated, and just have chapstick as well. Uh, I never used to use chapstick. Now I have to use it all the time, even though I drink tons of water. So overall, just know the elevation is not just mentioned for fun. Uh, it is very much so a real thing. Drink water, don't drink as much alcohol at first and just have chapstick, you'll be good. Number five, this is a fun one. People are super incredibly nice in California, Los Angeles. I love you guys so much and I'm so grateful for my time there, but damn, are people not super nice to each other or just not friendly. Uh, you don't go to the grocery store and talk to people when you're in line. You don't talk to people when you're walking down the street or anything like that, but they definitely do that here in Colorado and Denver. Um, I'm not trash talking LA. I, I'm not a, I'm not a trash talker of LA, I like it a lot. Uh, but then, yeah, people are nice there. Here, very nice people. Funny story about that actually, right after I moved to Denver, Colorado, about a year later, my sister moved here too, from LA as well. And she was in the, I went to her house one day, like a week after she got here, and she was like, the weirdest thing happened this morning. I was like, what? And she was, I was watering my plants in the front yard. I was like, yeah. She was like, and some guy was walking his dog and he just stopped, waved, said hi, I was asking about if I just moved in, they asked all these questions, and he was just super nice. 
And I was like, so what was the weird thing that happened? She's like, that was the weird thing. People talk to each other here. People go out of their way to be friendly and welcome you. And I, I just laughed. I was like, yeah, it's true. Like, once again, if, if you're not from LA, you don't, you may not get that. But yeah, that doesn't happen in LA. Thing I learned number six, people are very active here in a variety of ways. Rock climbing, snowboarding, skiing, white water rafting, indoor, outdoor rock climbing, uh, gym, CrossFit, people are just really into being fit and active here. Um, that's, that's been really fun to discover is that you're gonna get invited to go camping, rock climbing, all the sports I just mentioned, you're gonna get invited to go out there. And it's really fun. Um, I don't mean that to be intimidating to people who aren't maybe, who, I don't want that to sound intimidating. Like, oh my God, I have to be like a triathlon runner to, to live in Colorado. <laughs> live in Colorado. Uh, no, absolutely not. Once again, all shapes and sizes and fit and activity levels here across the spectrum. Everywhere. But people really just like using the beautiful landscape that is Colorado. So that's just a really fun thing to know about this uh, city and the state. Thing I learned number seven is that you can get from the north side of the city to the south side of the city, even at 5 p.m. on a weekday during complete rush hour in about 45 minutes, which isn't super bad for a, a city as big as Denver, in my opinion. Number eight, I think I'm on number eight. But what do I want to say number eight? This is something I definitely wish I knew before I moved here, is that heat is hotter in Denver. That sounds really silly, let me explain. Nine degrees feels hotter than nine degrees somewhere with lower elevation. Oh, like, I don't know, maybe California where I'm from. Sorry to reference that place so much, but it's literally all at my own. That's the only place I've lived other than this. Uh, but yeah, nine degrees in Denver, much hotter than California. That sounds absurd, but it's because of the elevation I learned after I moved here uh, because of the low oxygen levels. The oxygen is thinner, UV rays penetrate more deeply. Basically, the sun kicks your ass. I remember the first week I moved here, I looked in the weather, it was 80 or 90 degrees all week, and I was like, Phew. Been living in that my whole life, no big deal. It was a big deal, I got my butt kicked. And I was telling my sister that once again, cause she moved here shortly after I did from California. And I was telling her that like, look, be prepared cause it's gonna be hotter than what it says. And she was like, that's ridiculous. She moved here and she was like, what the frickin' heck? Uh, yeah, so it's definitely hotter. Heat is hotter here. It's a silly way to say it, but it holds up. The last thing I learned moving from California to Colorado, and by the way, I know I said 10, but I counted wrong, it's nine. So this is the last one, number nine. Anyone who's grown up in snow is gonna completely laugh at me and think this is the silliest thing ever. But once again, I'm an idiot when it comes to snow because I've never had to deal with it before. Credit cards do not work to, to get ice off your car windshield. It's either A, that it's gonna, the ice is gonna be way too thick and it's not gonna work at all, or number two, actually, and number two, it's just gonna shred your credit card to pieces. Um, obviously there's some times where it's not as intense and you can scrape it off pretty easily. But definitely just go on Amazon immediately, get a, a, an actual windshield scraper, because I went through like three credit cards. And I was like, I've seen people in movies do this, it should be no problem. It turns out it's definitely a problem. So either go to a gas station and pick them up during winter time, or leading up to winter, uh, or get one on Amazon. I know it is so dumb, but once again, how would I know any better? I never had snow before. So yeah, definitely pick up a windshield scraper. Once again, believe me, I'm fully aware of how absurdly silly that is, but it's something I learned, so I wanted to share. Guys, Tori Drake, Denver Realtor, I appreciate you watching this video so, so much. Once again, this is part four of a four-part series on my YouTube playlist. Uh, called So You Think You Want to Move to Denver, where I give you everything I think you should know and things I wish I knew before I moved to Denver, Colorado, just to help you make the best decision possible. If you have any questions or any real estate needs, feel free to reach out to me using my YouTube description. Um, one of the, my strongest suits as a realtor here is I have to learn the city from the ground up as someone coming from the outside and learning it. So I know the city, I know the city so darn well from a different perspective, especially from the perspective of someone moving here. So I'd love to help you. Even if it's not like you're not ready to buy real estate, if you're thinking of moving, um, you have questions about it, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to answer any questions that you may have. I got lots of community tours on my YouTube, so check those out. And please consider subscribing because that would just mean a ton to me. That'd be super cool. And guys, once again, Toria Drake, Denver Realtor, thank you so much.